My name is Jim Burr, and today we're going to be talking about the starlight and time uh, issue, problem, starlight and time problem. I uh, have been spending 30 years building telescopes. You, in fact, see a binocular telescope, which I invented. You would actually stand on the other side, put your head between those two tubes, and look down into the telescope. I'm semi-retiring now. I'm getting to that age. My kids said i got to retire. We build a lot of telescopes. We actually have built, um, this is one of the largest ones we've built, on a four-wheel trailer, a 40-inch telescope. We did two, two for NASA for the Mars Science Lab. And uh, that is a picture of what Mars, uh, getting data from Mars on a laser was, was what, uh, what they wanted. And so uh, I have been traveling for 30 years. We travel the world lecturing on astronomy and the Bible. In fact, we have a daily television show. I'm out of California. We did 60-some shows uh, at uh, LLBN Television, Loma Linda Broadcasting Television on nine satellites going around the world. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Tuesday and Thursdays, uh, Tuesday and Wednesdays, we are on DISH Network 9393, Heavens Declare, and the series in Russia. I'm not sure when they run that. But I've been working for 20 years on the starlight and time issue. I've, it's been a burden of mine for 20 years. I haven't spent 20 solid years, but I've been going through the Bible with a fine-tooth comb. I think they gotta, there's got to be an answer in the Bible. God made the stars and he wrote the Bible, inspired the Bible. They should agree. We shouldn't have this terrible disagreement. And I recently ran into a book by the man uh, by the name of Gorman Gray. He's out of uh, Washington. And uh, he has this, uh, this book which uh, has been a, a big help in, in, uh, in doing this, getting ready for this video. He had an earlier book um, that I have, which is out of print. Uh, he's 90 years old. He's Morningstar Publications out of Washington State. And um, I think he still has some of the new books available. But um, anyhow, today we've called this the silver bullet. Uh, the silver bu a silver bullet is a simple answer that solves a long-standing problem. And uh, I thought silver bullet would be good because you, you, won't, you won't forget it. But one of the important points we're going to be making today is that Genesis 1 verse 8 interprets Exodus 20 verse 11. That's going to be much of our focus. But we're going to deal with dozens and dozens and dozens of scriptures. Because I think the answer is in the Bible. And uh, so... Uh, I should first say that I believe in the universal flood of Noah's time. Uh, I believe God created the biosphere with all life on it in six literal 24-hour days. I don't believe he did the universe. And you, as you'll see, we have a bombshell. I think this is a revolutionary uh, information we're going to be sharing with you today. And um, the question is, how did light get here and 6,000 years from galaxies that are billions, 13 billion light years away. Um, has anybody gone to the Bible? We have all these people have come up with all these ideas trying to solve the starlight problem. And it's interesting, as you'll see, nobody agrees with anybody else. Everybody's got their own idea on it. But um, I feel that uh, I need to, to pray before we get started. Yeah, I've done a lot of praying on this. Uh, project, and I want to ask God, Father, I pray for your spirit to bless our our thoughts and our words today and the minds of those who will be listening. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you can be honored, that we can say what is right about you, and that many people will see a solution to this problem that plagues fundamental Christianity. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So could it be that man has created the starlight problem with a superficial reading of Scripture? I think that could be a clue there. Uh, biblical chronology indicates that the biosphere is young, and uh, there's a lot of evidence for a young Earth. But where do we get the idea that the whole universe was created 6,000 years ago? This program will attempt to show that the Bible does not teach a 6,000-year-old universe. Uh, it seems many people know there's a problem. Ken Ham says if there's one area 
Where the Christian's armor is weak, this is the area where our armor is weak. Yes, it is really weak. Uh, TJ Journal in 2001, uh, page uh, 247. This was the June issue, I believe. Uh, and TJ Journal says, we cannot yet claim to have a solution for the starlight problem. Uh, and then we have Russell Humphreys, Ph.D., a man <laughs> highly, much highly educated than I am. Uh, but he comes up with black holes, white holes, event horizons, all kind of theoretical physics to explain how light could get here in 6,000 years. His theory is difficult for theoretical physicists to understand. And I certainly don't understand it. <laughs> and it is also hotly disputed by physicists. And then there's the one-way speed of light. Dr. Lyle, again, a PhD, says, well, you know, maybe the speed of light isn't consistent. Maybe the one-way speed of light is different than the round-trip speed of light. And so we could uh, mention another one. T taking, taking back astronomy says the Bible explicitly tells us the universe is 6,000 years old. The Bible implicitly teaches that? Folks, no way. I think we're going to demolish that today. The Bible and the Lord is going to demolish that. Then we have Setterfield, the speed of light. Maybe used to be infinitely fast and now it's slowed down. Any, uh, anybody can, you can go to your computer and verify this. Take a look at the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula uh, was, actually in the, was actually in the constellation of Taurus. One night there was a star nobody noticed the night before. This thing, supernova, blew up a thousand years ago. July 4th, 1054, the Chinese made a record of the Crab Nebula exploding. This thing was so bright you could see it in the daytime. And the gas is going out 400,000 miles every hour. So guess what? Astronomers have photographed the Crab Nebula every 15 years and played it back on a computer and verified that this thing happened July 4th, 1054. Now, if the speed of light had changed in the last thousands of years, the numbers wouldn't have worked. So you see, any amateur can, can go check that out. And um, let's see here. Uh, the Crab Nebula, okay. Um, there are dozens of ideas people have come up with how light could get here in 6,000 years. There's a problem with every idea. Bible-believing physicists can't agree with each other. <laughs> I mentioned two already. They can't agree with each other. And as the ideas proliferate, the credibility of each theory diminishes. And then there's the gap theory. And... Um, Ken Hoven, Ken Hoven, a man who's done a fantastic work for the Lord. <laughs> I joke he's going to need a wheelbarrow to carry his crown. <laughs> All the stars are going to be in his crown for the work he's done. But he thinks that supernovas explain the galaxy is young. There's a problem. If you watch Ken Hoven, what he has to say. He's talking. He says, we have novas. We have 30 novas, about 30 novas a year in our Milky Way galaxy. And if you watch on the back screen, he's got supernova and he's comparing apples and oranges. We have not had a supernova since the invention of the telescope. But Ken Hoven it says we're getting 30 nova supernovas a, a year, novas, but he applies it to supernovas and uses that dissipation of the supernovas to show that the galaxy is not, six, is, the galaxy is not infinitely old. And um, then uh, let's see if I want to cover all these. Uh, okay, one writer from Rocky Mountain Creation Fellowship in his newsletter said, the starlight problem is the most difficult theory Christians have to deal with. This is one of the writers from years ago, 2002 actually, in Rocky Mountain Creation Fellowship. He goes on to say the solution is in the future. Starlight problem solutions in the future, but first we must reinvent the atom. Okay? And he goes on to say that prior to Genesis 1 1, the on, there only was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the universe. 
And during creation week, the angels and Lucifer were created during creation week. That's in the Rocky Mountain Creation Fellowship newsletter, volume 14, January, February 2002. And uh, that was like a bomb going off when I read that. Then we, uh, a question was asked to Dr. Henry Morris, uh, again, a giant in this field. And the question is, what are the biggest scientific problems we as creationists have? And he said, light from distant galaxies and radioisotope dating. That is the most difficult question creationists have to do. How does light get here from billions of light years away? Dare I say everyone sees the problem? We will look at 50 scriptures I believe will solve the starlight problem without doing violence to science or the Bible. They should agree. God did both. <laughs> and even uh, we're going to even find a clue to radiometric dating. The Bible says, come now, let us reason to be together. God created the stars and inspired the Bible. There should be harmony. It's hard enough selling a young earth. We have a hard enough time getting people to accept a young earth with all the evidence. Now, you can find the, I'm not going to go in, I have time to go into the evidence, but all the evidence showing uh, a, a young earth. And so it's hard enough selling a young earth, but where is the evidence the universe is young? Folks, there is no evidence the universe is young. I have offered a $3,000 binocular. This is, this is not $3,000. This is about $16,000. Okay. I've offered a $3,000 binocular telescope for 20 years to anybody who can show me one piece of information that the universe is 6,000 years old. Nobody has come forward to claim that. With an old universe, the evidence is all on their side. Every attempt arguing for a young universe is grasping at straws, folks. Young solar system, yes, I would agree with that. We could go into that, but I don't have time today. My biggest concern is there's people that just cannot accept a 6,000-year-old universe and consider such bogus science is not worthy of further interest. and go off to evolution or theistic evolution, etc. Also, scientists have such contempt for why, I call them Y6K people, the young, you remember this Y62K, well, Y6 young K universe, uh, the young 6,000 year old universe people, okay. They have such contempt for those people. They think you're out of touch, you left your brains at the door, you got the credibility of a flat earther. And they say if the universe is 6,000 years old, everything we know about science is wrong. And this, they are saying the nastiest stuff about people who think the universe is 6,000 years old. And it's a shame because the Bible does not demand that. Uh, I can't even repeat some of the stuff that's being said on YouTube today about people promoting even the one-way speed of light. I, I can't repeat what's being said. So there's a great antagonism there. I have some experience with this. Um, I, for many, 20, 30 years, have been attending the uh, Riverside Telescope Makers Conference, uh, sponsored by the Riverside Telescope Makers in Southern California. We go to those conventions, show our telescopes. That's how NASA found one of our big 25-inch scopes that they want for that project we had at the show. Anyhow, uh, at Riverside Telescope Makers Conference every S Memorial Day weekend, I don't go there now, it's kind of uh, disintegrated, but one day they asked me to do the Sunday morning service. They always have a Sunday morning worship service, and they asked me if I would speak at the Rocky Mountain, the, um, Rocky Mountain but the uh, Riverside Telescope Makers Conference. So I did. I spoke to this group of uh, hundreds of people. There's actually thousands there, but not everybody attends a Sunday morning service. And the title of my s sermon was The Hubble, the Bible, and What You Won't See on the Discovery Channel. And I had plenty of people shaking their head because astronomers tend not to believe in God. And uh, 
The Christians, of course, came up afterwards and were appreciating what I had presented, but it was kind of a little touch. It's quite a change when you have people that like what you're saying and people who don't like what you're saying. Um, so a correct study of Scripture fits nicely with scientific observations in the universe. So uh, I want to. I have ten, call, call them silver bullets here. We're going to have them put them on the screen, but I'll read them to you. Uh, I have 10 here that I think show the universe is not 6,000 years old and it has a lot of scripture. I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of scripture uh, that support the presentation we're doing. Uh, what is interesting, NASA picture of the day, uh, this is the Cat's Eye Nebula. And this thing is sent out rings every 1500 years. Now you can go to NASA, if you go to NASA picture of the day, and if you look, this would be NASA picture of the day, May 9, 2010, you will see the Cat's Eye Nebula. And uh, you'll see the rings here. I can count about 20 rings expanding out. Every ring goes out 1500 years. Uh, so I can see about 30,000 years of expansion of this. And um, NASA says no, and if you look at that website, you'll see they say it's at least 50,000 years, maybe 90,000 years old. These rings have been belching out, and the, uh, sometimes supernovas do this, or novas do this. At a Carini, every 5.2 you know, years, we get this thing, a, a blast of, uh, of increased light. So that is the first point we we're going to show you on these 10 points that we're going to cover today. And... Um, so, number two, the Bible says God's throne is in the heavens from everlasting, established from time immemorial. So, how could the universe be 6,000 years old if God's throne is from ever and ever, forever and ever, from eternity past? So, that's one of the points we're going to investigate. Another one is Genesis 1, verse 8. And that is, God said the firmament he called heaven, the firmament. We're getting confused on the heaven that fits in uh, Exodus 20, verse 11. We're going we're gonna to touch on that. It's interesting that God says the firmament of heaven, the firmament God called heaven, and it's repeated nine times in the first chapter of Genesis. Genesis is not about the universe. It's all about the earth. 21 times, the earth, the earth, the earth, the earth, 21 times, and, and nine times, the firmament of heaven. So we're going to go into that and... Um, God has defined that for us, okay? And uh, the stars were mentioned on day four, but they were not created on day four. And we're going to investigate that. Um, and then the foundations of the earth were mentioned uh, many, many, many times. Over 80 sometimes the foundations uh, are talked about in the Bible, but the, but the foundations of the earth were created of old, a connection always connected with the heavens. We're going to look at that and see because that is the clue that we're going to investigate there about the when the foundations of the earth were laid. The Bible, I think, is going to clear that up. The Bible used the term of old. Of old is kind of a yardstick. We can use that to measure things. Of old, do you know God identifies of old with eternity from everlasting? And, and that's when he laid the foundations of old. We're going to go into that. And uh, Revelation 12, 12 is another yardstick. Revelation 12, 12 says, Rejoice ye heavens and woe to the earth because Satan's cast out of heaven. He's cast down to the earth. He's very angry because he has a short time. Some uh, translation would say a little time. He has little time left. He has a short time. He knows his time is short. So we could say, well, that's about 6,000 years ago Satan was cast out. And that is considered a short time. And then we're going to look at the examples in the Bible of, of long time, old time, eternity, and so forth. And then uh, there was war in heaven. Uh, the war was not in the Garden of Eden. We're going to investigate that. And then when did time begin? Somebody say, well, anything prior, to, uh, you know, time began when, we, when God created the, the, uh, the creation account. Actually, time began in verse 5. There's some things going on. The evening and the morning were the first days. That's when you set your clock. Your clock starts, Genesis 1, verse 5, because the evening and the morning were the first day. That's when you start your clock. That's when time began. So we're going to go into that. 
And then we're going to start with the fourth commandment, Exodus 20, verse 11. This, folks, is a bombshell. Um, okay, the King James is interesting. If you look at the King James, the King James uses heaven, the term heaven, uh, 500 and 650 times. 650 times King James uses the term heaven. In fact, heaven is a catch-all term. In the King James, heaven is a catch-all term for anything above the ground. We're going to show you that and demonstrate that now. Um, the Bible says, um, Absalom rode under a tree and he hung between heaven and earth. Absalom hung between Pluto and the earth, or the Andromeda galaxy. No, what's the context? And that's in 2 Samuel 18, verse 9. In the law of hermeneutics, context rules. Context rules. What's the context of Absalom riding under a tree? The context is a tree, a branch, <laughs> a donkey, the earth, and a branch that would contact Absalom. He had this very, really, really long hair. It got caught in the tree. He hung between heaven and earth. So the King James says Absalom hung between heaven and earth. Other translations would say that he hung in midair. He hung in the air. He hung above the ground. But King James says he hung between heaven and earth. So look at the law of, of, uh, of, of, of hermeneutics, which dictates that context rules. Um, you could look at um, the spies. The spies went to the promised land and they came back with a report. There were giants there and they said their walls of their cities reach up to heaven was how what's the context there walls how how the highest wall that a person could build you know it's not to the moon it's not to the stratosphere it, it goes really really high into the air and other translations would once again say the walls go into the heaven they go into the air they go into the firmament they go into the atmosphere um, but king james says the walls reach up to heaven and that's in Deuteronomy 1.28. Uh, and so, in the King James, everything is heaven. The firmament is heaven. The sky is heaven. The atmosphere is heaven. The air is heaven. The third heaven is still heaven. The heaven of heavens is heaven. And Jesus ascended above all heavens. So maybe there's something above all heavens. But you see, with King James... Heaven is a generic term for everything above the ground. So heaven with Absalom, heaven could start about two feet off the ground because he hung between heaven and earth. And uh, so what does this have to do with the starlight problem? It, absolutely everything you're going to see. Just stay with me, okay, for a few more slides. You'll see what this has to do. And 11 times King James talks about the dew of heaven. Well, where does the dew come from? The sky, the clouds, the atmosphere, the air, you see. It doesn't come from the stratosphere, or it doesn't come from Pluto or Andromeda galaxy, but that word is used. Uh, and so it's a law of hermeneutics, context rules. Now, if you look at the King James, some of the more illustrations here would be, uh, King James talks about the, the rain from heavens, uh, heaven. It, uh, what's the context? Well, the clouds, okay? It talks about, oh, he opened up the windows of heaven. He shut up the windows of heaven. It didn't rain. He opened them, but they rained. Again, the windows of heaven. We're talking, again, a context is the clouds. And the birds fly in the heavens. What's the context there? It's below the clouds, isn't it? And uh, the Bible says the sun in Psalms 19, verse 6, says his going forth is from one end of heaven and his circuit to the ends of it. Does the sun go from the Sombrero galaxy to the Whirlpool galaxy? Uh, no, it goes from one end of the horizon to the other. But again, King James says one end of heaven to the other, uh, to the ends of it, Psalm 19, 6. Um, and uh, going on, it talks about um, the flood. All flesh uh, under heaven was destroyed in the flood. It talks about the fowls of the heaven. They, birds fly in the air, again under the clouds. It talks about the frost of heaven, the fire and brimstone in Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And so you see with King James, everything above the ground is heavens. Now I have another slide we want to put up for you because in the first five books of the Bible, I took a look at the first five books of the Bible and the King James, there are 88 times heaven is mentioned in the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. 88 times, 50% of the times, half of the times, it's clearly the air, the firmament, the atmosphere, the, 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 uh, it's not the universe. It's not the galaxies. 50% of the time, 46, there's actually 46 times the word should be air, sky, or atmosphere, or firmament. But King James puts heaven in there. And so 50% 50, 50 of the time in the first six, look it up yourself. So when you read Genesis, when you read Exodus 20, verse 11, which heaven fits contextually? What is the context there? And what happens if you put the wrong heaven in there? Um, the context of, 20, of Exodus 20, 11, uh, as we would read it, it says, For in six days the Lord made heaven, the earth, and the sea. Uh, what's out of place there? The heaven, the earth, in context, what is out of place? The heaven, the earth, and the sea. The earth is already 70% sea. Why is the sea mentioned? What's the context there? To illustrate that, what if it said, for in six days the Lord made the universe, the earth, and Africa? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Africa is already a good portion of the earth. The context is focusing on the earth and the sea. It's not 200 billion galaxies. The focus is on the earth. And um, for in six days the Lord made the universe, the earth. Okay, I already read that. The only words that fit the context are the sky, the air, or the firmament, or the uh, atmosphere. The only words you can use in there, and God's gonna, God says, I, I, you're going to see it, God interprets that for us. Some creationists leave out the sea. I wonder why. But fasten your seat belts, folks. Hang on to your hats. Here we go. This is revolutionary, I believe, folks. Genesis 1, verse 8 is so important that God defined the word. It is the only place in the Bible where God defines a word. God called the firmament heaven. Genesis 1, verse 8, God called the firmament heaven. Firmament is like the air, the sky, the atmosphere, or the firmament. So when we read Exodus 20, verse 11, we need to put in the word God defined, the only word he's defined. He defined that he wanted to be sure we got it right. And so Exodus 21 should read, for in six days the Lord made the air, I mean, or if you choose the sky, or the atmosphere, or the firmament. That's what fits. Any one of those words, I think, work there uh, and give the concept God wants us to get. And so he made the air, the sky, the atmosphere, the firmament, the earth, and the sea. Now it fits. 200 billion galaxies don't, it, out, of the, out of context, because once again, context determines, it's the law of hermeneutics. Uh, God called the firmament heaven, call it air sign, Sky, atmosphere, firmament. It should read, For in six days the Lord made the air, the sky, the atmosphere, the earth, and the sea, and all that is in them. All that is in the earth, all that is in the sea, all that is in the atmosphere, or the air, or the sky. Not the stars, and not the universe. So you see, if you believe that that statement, for in six days the Lord made the heaven, the earth, the sea, all of a sudden that includes Satan and the angels, right? If everything, if, as it said in the Rocky Mountain Creation Newsletter, that writer, that the, at Genesis 1-1, the only thing in the universe was the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. And everything in the universe was made in creation week. So we've got some problems we're going to deal with there. And so God could have said that, for in six days he made the second heaven or the third heaven or the heaven of heavens <laughs> or uh, the creation of all heavens. Jesus ascended above all heavens. He could have said that, but what did he say? Now I'm talking about the firmament. And God himself has given us the definition in Genesis 1 verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven. 
This is the only place where God specifically defined the meaning of any term. Therefore, that definition must control the interpolation of Genesis 20:11, I mean excuse me, Exodus 20:11 and Exodus 31:17. We must put God gave us the word, he defined the word. It's the only place he's defined a word. And we must put that word in Exodus 20:11. In Exodus 31, 17. Because they reference, in, in, look at the, the first chapter of Genesis, is what is the six days of creation? It's the same days repeated in the fourth commandment in Exodus 20, 11. Because it talks about in six days, the Lord made heaven and the firmament. And now in the fourth commandment, for in six days, it repeats again. It's talking about the very same days that the Bible uh, talks about in the, in, in the creation account. And to be interpretively sound, we must use the definitions supplied by God himself, namely air, earth, and sea. God knew the future. The Bible tells us God knows the beginning from the end. He knows the future, doesn't he? I believe that. I believe God knows the future. And God knows that we might get that wrong in Exodus 20, 11. So to be clear... He defined it and called it the firmament of heaven. I think he knew we were going to get it wrong, and that's why he defined it. And until now, we still get it wrong. It's still the way we read it. And some might still not accept it. So what's interesting, do you know that in Genesis 1, he repeats that nine times. In verse 8, the firmament of heaven. But nine times in the first, he, the focus of Genesis is the earth, folks. The earth, the earth, the earth, 21 times. And then he repeats that. So we get it. Nine times, the firmament of heaven, the firmament of heaven, the firmament of heaven, the firmament of heaven, 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 firmament of heaven. Nine times he repeats that. So hopefully we'll get it because Exodus 20 verse 11, he made not the universe, not a 200 billion galaxies, but either the air, the sky, however you want to put a word in there, they probably all fit pretty well, the atmosphere and the firmament. And 21 times the earth is repeated, 56 times in the first chapter, the things of the earth. So what is the significance of this? Uh, where are we going with this? Exodus 20, uh, verse 11, is saying what was created was the air, the earth, and the sea, and all that in them is, not the galaxies, not the universe, not the stars. The Bible tells us when they were created. We're going to get to that. When he laid the foundation of old, of the earth, and created the heavens, which were created before Genesis 1, verse 5, when time began. Okay? Before. Just one verse five. Hold that thought. We're going to come back to that. Okay? When he laid the foundations. So, in Exodus 20, well, how we have to read that is in, and all that in them is. So, all that is in the air, all that is in the earth, all that is in the sea was made in six days. Not the stars. I'll deal with the stars a little later. Not the universe, not Satan and the angels, only the biosphere with all life. As I said, I know the fourth commandment is a bombshell. It took a lot of prayer, a few pointers from Goyman Gray, and, but we're only halfway done with the fourth commandment. So if we say, I cannot accept what you're saying, I still think the universe was created in Exodus 20.11, then there's some serious biblical problems we must deal with. The fourth commandment, as normally read, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. And that would include Lucifer, Satan, and the angels had to be created during creation week. Now, creationists don't talk about that a lot, but that's the only way you can read it. You either read it that he created the heaven and all that is in them, or he created the air, the earth, and the sea. In the Rocky Mountain uh, newsletter, the fourth commandment is normally read for in Six days the Lord made heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is. This would include Lucifer, Satan, and the angels during creation week. That was in Rocky Mountain Newsletter, uh, volume 14, pay, January and February uh, 2002. And that hit me like a ton of bricks when I read that. Because I said, man, they're applying the wrong heaven. 
You, the heaven, the war was not in heaven. Satan's was in heaven. It's clear like that. So if you believe that Satan and the angels were created during creation week, then you must believe that that included, the fourth commandment included all heavens, heaven, the earth, and the sea. And so now we have the most serious problem with the word of God. You're going to have to hit the delete button because you're going to have to delete Isaiah 14 where it talks about war in heaven. Satan says, I'm going to exalt myself. I'm going to be like God. I'm going to exalt myself above the stars. I will be like the Most High. Delete Isaiah 14 if you think the war was in the Garden of Eden or on earth or during creation week or even after creation week. Okay, delete then also Ezekiel 28, because Ezekiel 28 goes into more detail about the rebellion of Satan. And uh, so you have to delete then. Then deliver, delete Revelation 12, verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. Rejoice ye heavens, woe to the earth, because Satan's cast down. He was cast from heaven. He wasn't down here already. He was cast from heaven. Then you'll need to delete Luke 10, verse 18, where Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So you see, you can't have Lucifer and the angels created during creation week. You can't have war in the Garden of Eden during creation week. Then you could delete uh, Job 38, when God asked Job the question, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? And the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. And then Lucifer had said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Here we have two examples where the stars were in existence before they were mentioned in Isaiah and Job. So if we read Exodus 20, 11, like God himself defined it, the star problem is gone. The radiometric dating is gone. We'll show you that and we'll get back into that. All that is in the air, the earth and the sea fits. The Bible and it fits observed science. Dr. Henry Morse said the two biggest scientific problems we creationists have is the light from distant galaxies and the radiometric dating. Those are both gone with what we're presenting today. The creation of Lucifer and the angels is never mentioned in Genesis or anywhere in the Bible, only in the undefined past. If he is created during creation week, when did war break out? And when did Lucifer have time to talk to 10,000 times 10,000 of angels? He convinced one-third of the angels to leave with him, to follow him. Uh, that would take some time, wouldn't it? And that's done in heaven, not in the Garden of Eden. Um, and would God have placed... You see, God put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden. Would God have placed the tree of the knowledge of evil in the garden if evil had not already existed? I don't think so because the Bible tells us in Psalm 103 verse 4, God said, I will have nothing to do with evil. Um, we used to sing a song as a kids. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it for me. Uh, but someone says, well, Mark 10 verse 6 uh, says, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Okay, the beginning of creation. Okay. I would suggest that's talking about Genesis 5, 1 verse 5, not in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That is not the beginning, folks. We're going to show you that and expand on that. Um, there's a multitude of beginnings in the Bible, all kinds of beginnings in the Bible. Uh, for example, Satan, the Bible says, was perfect. The Bible says, God says, Satan was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him. And yet the Bible says he was a murderer from the beginning. I'm suggesting he was a murderer from the beginning of the earth, but he was imperfect in all his ways when he was created till iniquity was found in him. But let me give you some more. There's more evidence. We have here's five different beginnings. <laughs> okay, if we look at um, Mark 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mark 1.1, 1, 1, the beginning of the gospel. Was that the beginning of the gospel? No, we had four other beginnings. If you look at Genesis 3.15, uh, I put enmity between thee and the woman, and it shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his sail. So we heal. So we see the gospel told there. Then we could go to Abraham, and in Abraham, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Um, and uh, 
then we could go to, um, let's see, we could go to Ezra. Ezra is interesting because it has the foundations of the rebuilding of the temple. And they talk about laying the foundations. And seven, six chapters they mention, seven times they mention laying the foundations, foundations, foundations are mentioned seven times. It takes them 15 years to begin building the temple. But the foundations were begun 15 years earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we could look at Hebrews 4, verse 2. This is a cool one. And, uh, and so we're, 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 we're saying Mark 1, 1 was not the beginning. There was beginnings before the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we look at Mark 10, uh, if we, no, if we look at uh, Hebrews 4, verse 2, it says, For to us was the gospel preached as well as to them, Israel. Talking about Israel. So in, in, in uh, Hebrews 4, verse 2, the gospel is preached to us, and it was also preached to Israel prior to Mark 1, 1, when it was the gospel of Jesus. And then we could look at John the Baptist. He came baptizing. And, uh, and so then we get to, uh, see, Mark 10, verse 6, uh, is talking about Genesis 1, verse 5, from the uh, male and female created he them. That is the beginning. You set your clock. Genesis 1 verse 5. Um, and then we can look at one more before we go on to uh, a little another subject. Next point. Uh, Proverbs 22. This is kind of really interesting. Because wisdom says, I was appointed from eternity... From the beginning, before the world began. There was an eternity. There was a beginning before the world began. Okay, Proverbs 8, 22. So, to review a little bit what we have covered. Oh, we covered the cat's eye nebula. We've covered God's, oh, we're coming to God's throne, I guess, is next in the heavens. And uh, 1 verse 8, the firmament God called heaven. We've, uh, we're going to cover that. We're going to cover stars made on day four. Foundations are going to be mentioned, I think, next as we move along. In the building, the first thing you do is lay the foundations of a building. Foundations are mentioned 80 sometimes in Scripture. That's the first thing you do is, is build the, put the foundations in. But the foundations were never mentioned in Genesis. You're going to make an earth and you're not even going to mention the foundations because the foundations, I think, were already laid. The foundations of the earth were never part of the Genesis creation account. By contrast, how is it that the temple in Ezra mentions the foundations seven times in six chapters? Foundations are mentioned seven times in six, and yet the earth, creating the earth, is never mentioned. The foundations never mentioned of old. We're going to get into that and find out what that means. Um, and it took 15 years to build the temple, but creating the earth, there's no mention of foundations. Throughout Scripture, we see the foundations of heaven tied together uh, with the formation of earth. He laid the foundations, he created the heavens, laid the foundations, created the heavens. Uh, so let's look at some of those Scriptures. And forgettest the Lord thy Maker that has stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, Isaiah 51, 13. Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain. Isaiah 40, 21, 22. So again, God is tying the foundations of the earth with forming the heavens. Uh, Isaiah 51, 16. I stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. Jeremiah 31, 37. Thus says the Lord, if heaven above can be measured, and the foundation of the earth searched out beneath. I will cast off all the seed of Israel. Can you put a date on the foundations of the earth when they were made? Can you put a, can you put a date on Genesis 1.1? You see, we can put a date on Genesis 1 verse 5. The evening and morning were the first days. That's when our clocks started. That's when time started. We can't put a date on Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, and you... Lord, in the beginning have laid the foundation of the earth. In the beginning, and the heavens are the works of your hands. Hebrews 1, verse 10. The word of the Lord concerning Israel, saying, 
the Lord who stretches out the heavens and lays the foundations of the earth. You see, they're always tied together. Heavens, the foundations of the earth. Mine hand also has laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. Uh, Isaiah 48, 13. I guess I forgot to mention the previous scripture was Zechariah 12, verse 1. The Bible tells us when he laid the foundations of the earth, but not in Genesis. Did you get that? The, I believe the Bible tells us when the foundations of the earth were laid, but not in Genesis. Why didn't God mention the foundation? If he was going to start creating an earth, the first thing you do, I mean, look at the scripture 80 times. It's free to use <laughs> foundations, but never in Genesis. Why aren't they in Genesis? Of old, is never in Genesis. Psalms 102, 25, of old you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands. Other translations would say, uh, or uh, long ago you laid the foundations of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. Uh, it is in the undefined eternity past. It could be millions and millions of years that the foundations of the earth were laid in the heavens. Can you put a date on Genesis 1-1? No, I don't think so. Watch that word of old, of old. The Bible uses that. Well, I think it's a, it's a yardstick. We can use that word of old. Uh, watch the word of old. We'll see it dozens of times, contrasted with Revelation 12-12. Revelation 12-12 is a short time. Satan has 6,000 years. He's cast out of heaven. He's very angry because he has a short time. He has little time. He has little time left. But now we're looking at of old, which is tied with eternity. Micah 5, 2. Bethlehem Ephrata, out of thee shall come he who is of old. And it ties that with everlasting. He's from everlasting. He's from old, he's from everlasting. And other translations says he, he is from the days of eternity. Christ is from e days of eternity. From everlasting, from old, established for time immemorial. Why of old and the foundations are never in, mentioned in Genesis? Of old is never mentioned there. We're going to examine that now. Because the foundations, I believe, were laid before Genesis 1, 5, when time began. The foundations of the earth were form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. God didn't need to mention the foundations because they were laid of old. Can you put a date on Genesis 1? No. God pronounced the beginning of time in verse 5. God said the evening and the morning were the first days. That is when time started. Nothing defines time before in the beginning. Nothing defines time before Genesis 1 verse 5. There's no time I mentioned. You can't put a date on anything before that in the undefined. Many like to say the heavens are young, but the Bible says in 2 Peter... They are willingly ignorant that of the word, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were of old. So they say, no, the heavens are young. The Bible says the heavens were of old. 2 Peter 3, 5. Folks, this is a serious life or death matter. This could mean heaven and hell for some. Bruce L. Gordon from the Houston Baptist University says, and I'm going to uh, give you the concept here rather than par read paragraphs. But he says, for scientifically literate non-Christians, this starlight problem presents an obstacle to Christian faith. It can destroy their faith altogether. And then from Young, he's from uh, Christian Reform Calvin College, when, repented, re when presented with the gospel, unbelieving scientists will reckon that a religion that tolerates such bogus science as the young universe is not worthy of further interest. He calls this bogus science. Could it be from a superficial reading of Scripture, the Bible or Christianity with... Okay, this is another quotation from uh, Young and uh, Sternly, Bible Rocks and Time, page 478. And he says, the Bible or Christianity with spurious scientific hypothesis does not honor God and can only be injurious to the cause of Christ. And that's from Bible, Rocks, and Time. 
So the foundations were, lived, were laid in the undefined eternity. Millions or billions of years could have gone by. What are the foundations of the earth made of? Magma, right? Within the earth's crust, from which lava and other igneous rock is formed on cooling, zircons originally formed by the crystallization of magma and metaphoric rock millions of years ago. Do you see the possible solution for radiometric dating? That Dr. Henry Morris says the biggest scientific problem for creationists is starlight and distant galaxies and radiometric dating. Somebody needs to pick up on this. I'm not, I can't say any more on that subject. And uh, by the way, Gorman Gray's book um, is a very scholarly work that he has done, and he's done a lot of work with, with Hebrew uh, scholars. But I think we can see the possibility. Of old, God laid the foundations of the earth. He made the heavens. They were without in form and void. What's the, what's the foundations of the earth made of old? Never in Genesis. It's magma. It's rock. And we could see radiometric dating working all of a sudden. Somebody needs to pick up on that. It's not my area. Uh, okay, so God made the heavens, inspired the Bible. They should agree without torturing either Bible or science. I believe that the Bible has given us a yardstick to measure and show the universe is old and the biosphere is young. The points the Bible makes when the heavens were formed is never defined in the Bible. Somewhere in eternity past, not 6,000 years ago. Time began in 1 verse 5, Genesis 1 5. The foundations of the earth were laid undefined in the undefined eternity past. God never tells us when he laid the foundations except of old, but he ties of old with eternity past, okay, as Jesus was from eternity. He did not say it was, he did say it was without form and void. And uh, darkness is upon the face of the deep. Foundations are never mentioned in Genesis. Watch that word of old. The Bible ties the word with eternity. Stars were not created on day four. They were only mentioned on day four. Uh, I got a letter from an English professor. This English professor says, take a look at Genesis 14, 15, 16, and through there, 17. Because he says it's really interesting because God made the greater light and the lesser light, a creation event. God made the greater light and the lesser light. And then he adds and he interprets, he says, the reason I made the greater light and the lesser light, the reason is to give light on the earth. And by the way, the stars also to give light on the earth. The stars also is a parenthetic phrase. Don't forget, God did the stars also. The translators have added, he created the stars also. That's not in the original. You'll see it's in italics. That's been put in by the translators. So God did an event. He made the greater light. He created the lesser light to give light on the earth. And by the way, don't forget, God did the stars also. So this English professor says, if you need to analyze that, uh, that scripture. And let's take a look. At God's throne. In Psalm 90, 55, verse 19, God who is enthroned from of old, God, his throne is from of old. The one enthroned, if you look at different translations, the one enthroned for the ages. God is one enthroned from long ago. Revelation 12, 12, 6,000 years is a short time. It's a little time. It's a little time left. But here, God is throne, enthroned, enthroned from long ago. Contrast that with the short time. Psalm 45, 6, your throne, O God, is to eternity of eternities. How could the universe be 6,000 years old? His throne is from eternity to eternities. Psalm 68, 33, to him who rides the heavens, the ancient heavens, or the highest heavens of old, other translations would say, or the heavens which were from ancient times. Contrast that was a short time, a little time, a little time left. The word to watch is of old, and we went over this already. Micah 5, 2, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, 
Out of these shall come he whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting, from days of eternity, from everlasting, established from time immemorial. That's talking about Christ. Psalm 103, 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. Hebrews, uh, no, Matthew 5, 34. Heaven is my throne. Matthew 23, 22. Heaven is my throne. Lamentations 5, 19. You, O Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. Stars are mentioned 66 times in the Bible, only once in Genesis. I think I left out a scripture. Uh, it's, it's Hebrews 1 verse, 1 verse 8, and it talks about Christ. It says, to the Son, he says, you, O God, throne is from eternity of eternity, something like that, if you look that one up. I think I left that one out of here. The Bible tells us over and over again, God's throne is in the heavens from everlasting. How could the universe be 6,000 years old? Psalm 55, 19, God is enthroned from of old, from eternity, some translations, from forever and ever, from long ago. He who is before the ages, enthroned from the beginning, Contrast that with Revelation 22, a short time. Uh, how could the universe be 6,000 years old? The Bible tells us your throne, O God, is to the eternity of eternities. Uh, Psalm 45, 6. How could the universe, that was in Psalm 45, 6. How could the universe be 6,000 years old? Someone will say, but God is outside of time. Anything before Genesis 1, 1 has no relevance because time was created then. No, as we pointed out, time starts Genesis 1, verse 5. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness upon the face of the deep. Um, and so, uh, Psalm 33, 2. Your uh, 32, excuse me, Psalm 93, 2. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all of eternity. Your throne, O Lord, has stood from time immemorial. How could the universe be 6,000 years old? Since the Bible connects eternity past and of old from everlasting, from eternity to eternities, with his throne and the laying of the foundation of the earth and the creation of the heavens, could it be that God created the heavens, he laid the foundations of the earth in the undefined eternity past? The foundations of the earth existed, but the earth was without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. Then 6,000 years ago, God created the biosphere and all life on earth. So once again, we have covered now, I think, pretty much... Um, the points that we're going to make, the cat's eye nebula we've gone through, God's throne is from heaven, from everlasting to everlasting. Genesis 1, verse 8, Jesus, God defined the firmament is heaven. Uh, the stars were made on, not made on day four. They were only mentioned on day four. The foundations are mentioned, but never in Genesis. The Bible uses the term of old like a yardstick. Revelation 12, 12 is another yardstick. Uh, when did time begin? Genesis 1, verse 5. We went over the fourth commandment of bomb, bombshell. So in conclusion, the founders of the earth, foundations of the earth were laid of old. In eternity past, but the earth was without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. About 6,000 years ago, God came and created the biosphere, Adam and Eve and all life. So putting on the glasses of Genesis 1, verse 8, solves the starlight problem. Then, does scientific evidence fit nicely with the Bible? Only then. Starlight and problem, maybe radiometric deity. I think, folks, there it, you have it. There is the answer. Carl Sagan said something very interesting in the pale blue dot. And I thought it applies here to those who think the universe is 6,000 years old. I even try to minimize many times we don't really want to admit that the universe is 13.7 billion. And now a new study has just come out saying we think, scientists think the universe is 250 times bigger than that 13.7 billion years. But here's what Carl Sagan says. In some respects, science has far surpassed religion in delivering awe. How is it? that hardly any major religion has looked at science and concluded this is far better than we thought. The universe must be far bigger than our prophets said, grander, more subtle, more elegant. 
God must be even greater than we dreamed. Instead, they say, no, no, no. My God is a little God. I want him to stay that way. A religion, and this is Carl Sagan, <laughs> a religion old or new that stresses the magnificence of the universe as revealed by modern science might be able to draw forth reserves of reverence and awe hardly tapped by conventional faith. Sooner or later, such a religion will emerge. That's from Pale de Blot, page 50. And then he goes on. God must be even greater than we dreamed. Well, as Carl, that's what we're trying to do. So I want to thank you for watching. Our ministry is Heavens Declare. I'd be interested in hearing a feedback on this subject. But watch for Silver Bullet videos coming in the future. And we're working on another one. So thank you for watching.